2023 continues to have an overwhelming number of new games coming out. April has so many new releases that I have to break them into three parts. The first video will cover new RPGs, the second will cover new visual novels, and everything else will fall into the third video, including the most popular new game out of China and one of the most popular games on Steam ever in our industry. As always, the links to all of these games can be found for free on my Patreon because YouTube does not allow me to post them here. First up is Kagura Survivors Endless Night. This is a free-to-play roguelike in the style of Vampire Survivors. The development team behind this game, Big Bang Studio, are the ones also working on the new Project Melody game, so this is definitely a change of pace. While the launch of this early access title was a little rocky, my biggest concern is how often I will have to download and install content patches as the game develops. Regardless though, if you enjoy this style of game, then absolutely check it out. Kagura Survivors Endless Night is available for PC on Steam, with a patch available on Kagura's website. Next up is Phyllis, the receptionist of the guild. Picking up quests from the Adventurers Guild is standard in fantasy RPGs, but in this game you play as the person handing out the quests. Gameplay is broken into three parts, when you play as Phyllis, when you play as the adventurer Mark to go around town and complete minor quests, and the actual dungeon dies when the adventurers leave the town. While the third part is automated, your actions and choices in the first two parts will impact the outcome. Phyllis, the receptionist of the guild, is available for PC on Steam. From developer Ninetale, we have the Alchemist of Ars Magna. While this is the same studio that gave us the Venus Blood series, this is a very different gameplay experience. The RPG and combat aspects are pretty simple, but the alchemy and synthesis system is really kind of complex. There are multiple difficulties to choose from, as well as a new game plus mode. The two main endings have similar law and chaos paths that we see in other Ninetale games, and your flavors will be impacted the most by this choice. The Alchemist of Ars Magna is available for PC on Steam. In Paige Knight Ellen and the Dungeon Town Sodom, you play as a female protagonist who has to... <sighs> Let's just say that this is a corruption-focused female protagonist RPG. I can't show much, I can't say much, but I am sure that you will be able to quickly figure out if this is your kind of flavor by checking out the Steam page. Paige Knight Ellen and the Dungeon Town Sodom is available for PC on Steam. Another female protagonist corruption adventure is Stigmata of Sacrilege. This is a much shorter game from Kagra, and I highly recommend checking out the reviews before making a buying decision. Stigmata of Sacrilege is available for PC on Steam and Kagra's website. Golden Legend Herald Quest is a female protagonist strategy RPG that has open world exploration combined with real-time combat. Most of the sexual interactions are either corruption themed or utilize the sex on defeat mechanic. Golden Legend Herald Quest is available for PC on Steam. Are all female protagonists adult games corruption focused? The short answer is yes. The longer answer is sexual exploration tends to touch upon the limits and constraints of existing sexual mores and taboos. In many post-industrial societies, women are more likely to be placed in roles of sexual gatekeeping. So a prototypical female protagonist would invariably encounter some level of sexual corruption in the course of this sexual exploration. That being said, there are levels of corruption. Our next title, The Agnita, The Holy Healer and the Cursed Dungeon, is a Kafka-esque exploration of the corruption flavor. Just be aware that this is a whole other level of corruption and transformation that you'll explore in this game. The Agnita, The Holy Healer and the Cursed Dungeon is available for PC on Steam. That doesn't mean that all female protagonist games have to have darker themes of corruption. Is it wrong to repay the dead in a dungeon? is a more lighthearted exploration of this theme. Well, as lighthearted as trying to overcome crippling debt to avoid slavery is. The gameplay is a pretty interesting card-based RPG experience based on delving into a mystery dungeon. You expand and level your deck, and there is a new game plus mode which is always great for replayability. Is it wrong to repay the debt in a dungeon is available for PC on Steam. Next up is Divine Dawn. This early access title looks really ambitious with the mechanics that are already in-game. Combine that with hand-drawn art, and it looks like it could become something really great with time. This is definitely something to check out if you're looking to build your Monster Girl harem. Divine Dawn is available for PC, Mac, SteamOS, and Linux on Steam, with Android versions available on itch.io and their Patreon. And finally, we have the full release of Last Devil. This roguelike action shooter was silver tier on the 2021 Steam list when it was in early access. 
and is a great choice for people who like this genre and also want to explore interacting with a wide variety of genders and monsters. Last Devil is available for PC on Steam. There you have it. Hopefully there is something on this list for everyone who enjoys playing RPGs. I'll try to get the next parts out as quickly as possible for those who prefer other genres. I also really want to talk about the release of one of their early contenders for Game of the Year for 2023, but I won't be covering that until the third video. Spoilers. Until next time, no shaming, just gaming. Thanks to all this month's support on Patreon. I wouldn't have been able to do this without you all.